G'day. Hello. Uh, this is a show that is all about cannabis and medical cannabis and the proper and safe ways to do it. There's research notes and university stuff too. And it's only open to people who are of, of the appropriate age. And in your legalities, you've got to check with your legalities because I'd like to... I'd like to work with the law and whatever law is in your region, so I'd hope that you'd be appropriate too. Thank you. Today we're going to talk about, well, I'm going to talk about, is, is my audio working? Yep, good. It's, I can see it flashing in the screen. So today it's nutrients in plants. So there's a fair bit of stuff about that. Uh, it's, then there's cation exchange capacities. Well, it's really the it's the ion exchange capacity because I'm going to be talking about the cations and the anions, which equal the ion exchange, because you've got a plus the cation plus the anions, negatives plus positives gives you what the ion capacity is. Then there's this new thin leaf thing, which they it's just fascinating. Then the trichome study and a bit of Q and A at the end. So g'day g'day to Aussie Grow Show. Oi, 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 reckons. Can you speak about measurements and calculations in cannabis testing? For example, the way they test the levels as a calculation rather than measurement as the margin errors of calculations. Can you talk about cannabis testing? Um, actually, in two weeks' time is genetics, and there's a lot of testing stuff in that. So I'll really elaborate on that. But if, if time at the end, yes, please remind me if I forget, and we can talk a bit about that. I'll probably do a bit of in here because I'm going to talk about it might touch on your question actually Aussie Grow Shows oh, that was a question a bit late for an how you going mate oh, with 4% margin yep the wise ninja hello Baker Perkins hello CSL Lauren good morning and good evening to use wherever you are and why isn't the I can't see the chat on my little chat thing. Are oh, you kidding? I'm trying to bring up the chat as well. Oh, well, it's not coming up on my little device here. So I'm going to proceed. I hope everything's going well. Um, so I'll show you the slides. So that's what the first thing I'm going to do. Share screen. Tie screen. This is what I'm going to get through today. So, happy Thanksgiving to all the folks in the States yesterday. And I thought this is pretty appropriate. Look at that. It's a, there's a turkey here. But if you look a bit closer, it's a, um, it's a related turkey. How, that's pretty snazzy. Look at that. <laughs> the legs look even appropriate. I like the feathers. Very, very nice work to somebody. And... In the news, Utah seeks to ban synthetic cannabinoids. So that's the third place in the states that's banned. That's um, well, Oregon and another one did it not long ago, and now it's getting banned. Uh, the third place is getting banned. Amazing. And Colorado are actually legalizing medicinal mushrooms. So that's uh, interesting because I do support medicinal mushroom use. It's It works. It just works. I've got experience in it. But this is a cannabis-related show. We're going to talk about cannabis. And here's something related. Look at that. It's the world's first man-made biological leaf that can actually absorb water and carbon dioxide to produce oxygen. Isn't that cool? As It's just amazing. Technology. You know, if people say, oh, we can do this now, I'd nearly have to believe them because it's just technology so cool how it's just advancing. I can't see the chat. I don't know what's going on with my device. Sorry. So save your questions and stuff till a bit later because I'm not going to try and play around with screens to get stuff going. I've got too much to talk about. This is CO2 and crop yield. So this is one of the elements. Uh, the, one of the 17 essential elements for the plants. There's three of them that come from the air and carbon dioxide is one of them. It's the CH and O. There's, I'll talk about those breakdowns later, the 45% and stuff that there is of each of the elements. But this is the reason why what happens if you when it's been used. So after, it's, I think it says it up the top here, it summarises it. 
atmospheric CO2 can absorb productivity in two ways. It moderates improvement in crop yields through photosynthesis and it helps with stomata closing through water loss. It regulates it, so it must be done. Reduction of stomatal conductance and transport. Okay. So it dilutes of the CO2 in the leaves, gives lowering transpiration. And I can add some stuff and, and reduce nitrate assimilation. Very good. So I can add some stuff here with the CO2. It also increases your stomatal conductance, which is the amount of stomata, stoma that you see per, say, square inch if you have low CO2 because they will sense that there's not as a, a sufficient amount and they will develop more stoma. stoma. Uh, what's another cool CO2 thing? Actually, that'll do, because there's, there's a fair bit to get on with this, but that was a study that was done that's, that just proved those things. Trends in plant science. That's today. So see for oh, that's right, that was up to jobs. There we go. Entrepreneurships for everybody who's a partaker. So this was jobs. What was this for? Cosmetics. Oh, so if you're into beautician or something like that, or you know, you'd be interested because you can mix this and that and get different topical outcomes which are going to be very medicinal. <laughs> Look at that's the dressmaker. Like the last week was the fellow with the suit. Here's the, the leggings for the person that wants to make money for the cannabis stuff. And I like this. This is a pretty cool Kit Kat thing. So this is just artwork. So if you're clever with art, you can think of different ways that you can utilize the plants and stuff. And this per clever person's done it with a Kit Kat. But wow, this is just really good. Interesting. Took my eyes off. Well, that's just clever, you know. Good on them. So people should be doing that in cannabis and they can get the same sort of things. Now into the chemical properties of soil. So there's you know, three elements that make up good soil. There's your physical, your chemical, and your biological. And of the chemical, these are the four properties. You've got your cation exchange, yeah, which I'll talk a smidgen about. Your pH, your electrical conductivity, which is your salt level. And then your balance of the nutrients, what ratio you've got in there of those. So now I go to the slides. Actually, I should, I'll just duck back to chat before I go to this slide because I'm going to talk about soil and the nutrients in the soil health and the requirements for the plants. So I'll just see. Add to stream. All right, say good day because I haven't got my chat up. So I was up to about there. As a grocery and ninja, Jeff and Paula, how you going? Sunshine, g'day mate. Vinny, g'day Vinny. Lene, how you going, Lene? Gear changer, the gear won't be here long. So ask your questions to the gear because he's got to bail, everyone. <laughs> Florinugs, Cloudscapes, Mystico, oh, hello. Food at 420, always food in the house. Fair grow, g'day, fair grow. And say uh, the Aussie, hello, hello. All right, get back to it. So I'll share screen again. So the nutrients in plants. So I screen, and I think I'm going to go to this one. This is soil health. So soil it takes approximately 500 years for one inch of top layer. So these are all the soil horizons. So this is to do with that would be in the soil properties. Soil health. I'm going to skim on this. It's the capacity of soil to function with an ecosystem boundaries to sustain. Sustain is the key word. Biological productivity, maintain environmental quality, and promote plant and animal health. Healthy state of plants. So here's a healthy state. This is one that's got an infection in it. This is disease suppressed. So it's got a uh, pathogenic resistant genes put in it. It's primed. And this one is deficient in nutrients. So you can see the difference in the soil. So down the bottom here, pathogens is equal to the amount of beneficials. Here, there's way, way too many pathogens. Hang on. Sorry, I just had a smoke here before. The pathogens are stopped. See, there's a stop there. And there's beneficials just kicking around. So that's what's, this is the effects on the plant. 
and here for disease suppressed there's beneficials I can't read that Benef I'm confused now all right I'm gonna go to the next one but that's just basically explaining what this is all comes down to is healthy soil has an equal amount of pathogens and beneficials in it and then you've got to have your plant up to its present um, to its capacity for it to be able to function in that in your substrate the measure of soil organic matter the four soil indicators the chemical biological physical and organic matter yeah organic matters make so much that's just farmyard manure it's really it's i was amazed you get some of that you dry it up with an antibiotic source with non-antibiotic source and it's such a amazing properties it has so there's those three properties that i talked about before i'm um, just we're going to go a little bit into the chemical ones today not the biological with all the microbes and the physical not soil formation process takes ages and it takes quite a few different things yes it does soil fertility is the potential of the earth or inherent capacity of the soil to supply nutrients to the crop that's the soil fertility and the productivity is the capacity to produce it so can it happen is it is the elements there is it the right properties soil fertility versus productivity I'm not going to go into that there's way too much to talk about today just with this these nutrients and cycling uh, achieving balanced nutrition provide plant with essential nutrients avoids overing and undering of nutrient being balanced and balanced inputs oh, yeah. And the, this is the state of the your soil or substrate in different conditions. So on the here, it's degraded crops, and this is restored and really good crop conditions. So if you look underneath, so soil fertility is very high here, but here it's low. And same with the carbon accrual, nitrogen conservation, phosphorus availability and retention is very high. And look, it's a little bit higher over here because there's a lot retained in the soil because it, what is it? 45% I think from one crop will be retained from the next crop of phosphorus and you look at nutrient losses though because this is depleted in crap conditions maybe with the too high of a pH or something and the soil condition physical properties are low everything's getting leached and erosion's high so it won't last long uh, Liebig's law of the minimum it states that uh, any one of these these are the elements of the plant that they require the essential elements if any one of these is at the lowest it'll only perform at the lowest so if you've got your magnesium if it's under 0.2 percent it'll have a magnesium deficiency if it's not at 0.2 uh, to explain this chart this is your essential elements required for the plants so the first three come from the air your carbon hydrogen your oxygen and that's your percents that come out of it and then your NPK Calmag Sulfur. And this chart's written in 2010. Believe it or not, there's been an update. So I don't talk about sulfur uh, silicon as a macronutrient. It's a, oh hell, it's a, um, a quasi-element that is uh, floating around. And it is a macronutrient in cannabis, so I suppose it should be introduced in there. But in general in plants, it's changed. You'll see that a little bit later. And here you can see nitrogen requires 1.5%, potassium is 1%, calcium is 0.5%, and it goes down. And then it's so low in the micronutrients that it actually talks in ppm. So it doesn't talk in percents of the plant. It's down here in particles per million. So, and then molybdenum is one. And there was a problem in Australia a while ago where the farm outdoors where the crops were molybdenum deficient and by adding one look at that it's so little there's 60,000 more atoms required up here at the top than one down the bottom but it is essential and they, they added it to the substrate and it performed amazing they couldn't believe it all right back to uh, I think it's back to this now yeah back to this Lee Biggs law of the minimum so this is shown just so anything so here that the um, 
phosphorus is the lowest so you can see that's the plant can only do as good as that here the potassium is the lowest so I can only do as good as that so if you want to mathematically work it out you can this proves that by adding nitrogen here they just went and put heaps in how much do we really need on this crop we'll just keep adding it in well look it's the second time so 40 kilos per hectare was the maximum you should be ever putting for this crop from this test because yield diminishes after that so you didn't that prove that's stating that you don't you have to work with your crops nutritional requirements you can't just go and give it what you think because it might not want it and it might be different growth stages it might be different stresses lower the maximum no, I couldn't go into all that criteria for minimum yeah this is good so this is the criteria that is mean categorized for a plant so and this, these must be met a plant must be unable to complete its life cycle with the, the element the function of the element can't be substituted by any other element and it must it is required for specific metabolic function in the plant so that's to get you up to this why are they here and why are they labeled like that that's the reason why the essential yep you get your primary secondaries and it goes into your micros and then this that'll do actually the functions it's chno carbon dioxide from the air is converted by the plant to sugars through photosynthesis oxygen is required Mox, organic compounds must be present plants roots that's the only way the plant gets it through its roots so that's why you've got to have good aeration in your substrate hydrogen oxygen from the water takes up most of the weight of the living plants believe it or not and gets expelled through the roots the hydrogen the protons that's what raises your soil ph and that's what does your the exchanges your cation exchange we'll talk about that a bit later these are the constant that'll do classification primary actually this this chart no, this chart says it all your primary then your secondary and then your micros so i don't have to go and explain all what that chart's trying to explain all your traces then your ultras and then this is updated stuff so this course was in 2022 and this was i think this was written in 2021 so then it goes into the your beneficial plants so they used to be 19 essentials now they dropped it back down to 17 and then they put these as varying so you got your sodium selenium and your silicon and we know that silicon is important in cannabis and here's the forms that is required for plants so if you've got nitrogen there's seven or eight different types of forms that you can get it in there's only two that the plant actually accepts so it's nitrate and ammonium so if you've got nitrite it's not going to accept it it's just going to no i don't want it i can't use it it's got to be converted back to nitrate for it to be used so in phosphorus it's your orthophosphates your primary and your secondary and then it's your potassium calcium magnesium and sulfate not sulfide or sulfide it's sulfate ate and boron has two different states your borate and boric acid your copper is your cuprous that sounds funny a lot so that cuprous and um chlorine is your chloride and see the negatives is your anions and your positives is your cations so this is a bit it's very very i'm really touching on it and you have to focus but this is a good summary of what is going on and then you can read the last two three but that's actually what it's requires so it's a really handy chart so i thought wow this is just cool it's just love having just what the bloody plant wants no mucking around primaries uh, and we go for time sort of a fair bit to do, go through here nitrogen is the frequency actually i'm not going to go into we've i touched on why what they're important and what they're needed for the yield response to fertilizer applied yeah you can increase the yield and you can get no response to it and that's because it can be sitting in different stages so you want to work out what your crop requires and its nutrient requirement and then you can work really with it and increase the yield 
not your fertilizer. So you can really get the benefits out of it. This is a experiment done that shows you a crop that was under stresses. So it's got the pluses, which is these big dots, is your abiotic stress where it's happening and your negatives is where there's no stress. So you can see that the essential plant nutrients were sitting lower when its plants was under stress than when it's not. So this is goes down to what, 70 to 95 or 90. And with no stress, it's sitting 85 to 100. So it's, that's, if you're wondering how, why your yield is diminishing, you can consider that throughout your grow. The mobility is very important in plants because your MPKs are always mobile. They move from your older leaves, from your bigger leaves, to the younger leaves, which is the smaller tips. So if you've got deficiencies, you can tell through looking at those. So mobiles, yeah, plant. All right. And this is the mobile of nutrients within plants. So the NPK, they're pretty much a lot of them are mobile. Then you've got your varying, which has changed because they used to be immobile and mobile. Now it's varying because it's different conditions can allow different transpositions in the plant. But definitely the immobile ones, the calcium, boron, manganese. So you'll only see those deficiencies in new growth. If you see new growth deficiencies, it might be one of those. Hidden hunger is a spot where you get just, you're feeding your plants maximum, but they're still hungry. And how do you tell that? It's by doing these tests and you can see what's the most efficient outcome for the plant to get the best yield. I think that's about it for there. Yeah, then we're going to deficiencies. We've shown it. I'm not going to touch on because it's not part of this thing. Oh, this is interesting. Nitrate has a negative charge, like soil colludes. So nitrate is held, is not held by the soil, and that's why it leaches out. Uh, I'll go back to the cation exchange now. My little thing is telling me. CC. All right. I should look at questions. Anyway, the CEC is a mixture. Your ion exchange capacity is your cation exchange plus your anion exchange. Cation exchange is all of your atoms or elements with a positive next to it charge. Anion is with negatives. So your calmag, potassium, not, um, ammonium is there, and this is your nitrate sulfate and chlorine or chloride sorry that's down the bottom it's measured in milli equivalents and clay particles are high in your cec and that most soils have little or no anion exchange capacity because soil colludes are mostly negative charge the two hydrogen atoms are about 300 and the oxygen atom is no Actually, I'll get too confused. I'll, I'll just keep continuing with this. Uh, your cation exchange, you've got a bonding strength. Actually, you should talk about how it exchanges first. Yes, I should. All right. Where's an exchange chart? There's none. Oh, hang. Uh... Oh, this isn't very good. I was going to tell you how it exchanges. Oh, this might be... All right, I'll go through these. These look like I have a couple in it. Cool. So it exchanges by... Your soil has mostly a negative charge on it. It's just a slight negative charge. In other words, it attracts all the positives to it and it'll stick around the outside. So that's why your negatives, your anions, they'll just pass through and it's hard to keep them, retain them in the soil. So that's really the effects of that. Effects of nanobubbles and nanobubbles can help because they create a little charge site so you can get little exchanges happening because this is all at molecular level so that's why these things help nanotechnology is really cool uh the haber process that's when you exchange this is the transformation of ammonia to nitrogen why is this important because it comes from the air uses three methane gases and changes to two, two lots of ammonia gases Sorry, this shouldn't have been. Anyway, oh, this is better. Here we go. Some exchange. So this is a root hair, 
and you've got your protons, which get put out of through the roots, which is your hydrogen atoms, your H pluses, and then they get to get replaced with something. So they will push out with the bonding strength and unlock different colloids. There's a col soil colloid sitting here and different attachments that are attached to it. So there's your magnesium, potassium, calcium. It's all sitting around it. And in clay, it has a lot of potassium in it. And the oh, isomorphic substitution in clay particles is the reason why clay can exchange. Uh, that's it. I'll have to show you charts for, to explain that one. And the root hairs put out your protons, which has your bonding strength. So that's a H plus. So where's the bonding strength chart? Here. Bottom right. So at the top is your has the highest bonding strength, which is hydrogen, your H plus. So if anything's below it, the hydrogen comes along, bang, it'll bump into the calcium and exchange it and take its position. And bang, calcium will be floating, which therefore makes it available to the plant because it can pick it up. So anything below that. So that's how the plant exchanges with its elements and attracts it and absorbs it. All right, back to it. No, hidden hunger is done. Oh, no. Oh, it's this one. So that's how you get to your exchange here. Yeah, I don't have to probably read here what it says. You can read it if you want. I'm not. Oh, cool. Similar thing. A clay particle which is negatively charged binds mineral cations. Yeah. And then an exchange. So that'll put it out. The H plus will put out. It'll bump into potassium or anything else under it, bump it off, and bang, it'll go back and take its place, and it'll be sitting there, and then the plant can just absorb it through its pores as it does its absorption and uptake process. Protons are pumped. Oh, yeah, this just basically says it's a clay, so that's why clay is always beneficial. But you have to get your biologicals up, and clay doesn't have much biologicals, so you have to manipulate your soil or your substrate. Uh, more hydrogen is released. Oh, yep, this is healthy soil to not healthy. So see on the left is a healthy substrate where you're getting a good exchange process. All these are getting uptake. Hydrogen is going, releasing from your exudates, and it's happening well. Here, it's poor. So you're not getting much exchange happening at all. Less iron exchange. Because uh, um, we're talking about minerals, this is an oxygen deficiency. So this is a test done with oxygen to see what the difference is on how well it works on roots. So you can see it's very, very beneficial if you want really big, massive roots. You can grow in levels under 1% ppm, 3% or 7%. That's this test shows good results. All that read off the top here. Oxygen deficiency in hydroponic nutrient solution can cause serious root growth damage. There you go. Do you know each bend too? If you've got a big irrigation system, each bend can reduce the oxygen content in your dissolved oxygen in your water levels. Yeah, so I know they're at the Maggie's at the door. Oh, this is a cool bee. Look at that. That's a bee zoomed in with its compound eyes. I was talking about ants last week. Look at that. Hey, don't mess with me. You behave, okay? <laughs> Some dad jokes for you. Uh, I wasn't going to talk. I'm not going to do this deficiencies because there's some other stuff still to go through yet. Yeah, there is. Look, I'm going to talk about this. So farmyard manure, biochar, and pressed mud. It's all really good to uptake and for the exchange. Oh, this is talking about cadmium. Cadmium's a positive. So it wants to suck onto any negatives and then it'll bioaccumulate into the plant. Okay, just basically showing about how the cation exchange works. If you've got something bad in your substrate, it will accumulate in your soil and can exchange. Oh yeah, this is the, thanks for the people that support. A few people that have given $5. That's what that little button is underneath. I appreciate your help. Uh, the $80 is for my private lectures. There's about a dozen of them if you want some of them. And $150 is for a 20-minute call and a novelty gift like a chart or something that I've made. And $300 is for a weekly call, and that's directed to more so a company or for somebody who's going through doctor's problems and might want my educated opinion. 
thank you for those who have helped. And there are a few. Thank you. Oh, no, back to... Oh, I've got to talk about trichomes. How trichomes make terpenes and cannabinoids. There's a study done on that. That's last. Can't, I'm nearly done here. I haven't answered anybody's questions. You have to save your questions up because I'm not looking at chat. Get ready to type them in chat soon because I've just about finished here and then we can start it on the questions. I think I've been through everything. Oh, no. There's a few up here. I see them. These two. So your major chemicals, if you've got clogging problems in your irrigation system, that's to do with these calcium, magnesium, iron, manganese. They're really bad. They form carbonates, which is all your blockage. It's, it's not very, very good. They precipitate and form all problems. See the Kelmag? They react together, and then you get all that white-looking chalky stuff. That's the precipitation. So just consider that. Uh, this is how the, they work through the plant. So this is just to say that in cannabis, it'll go, once it photosynthesizes, it'll go into a source, goes from this source, which is synthesized, photosynthesized, and goes into sink cells. The sink cells are really usually the extra, the old leaves, and all the energy will get stored in that. And then in the, the small shoots, the new shoots, they will pull energy out of it, which is all of these minerals when they require it, and go into the tip. The new tip growth will only be your calcium, boron, and manganese, which it's processed there because it's not mobile in the plant. Everything else can be sucked out. Uh, see you, Maggie. Um, and it's just, just this chart. The importance of soil watering. So there's a few different ways you can water your plants to get your minerals in. So you've got mass flow, which is just pour through the top and mass flows, flows out through the bottom. So that's why the chances of getting nitrogen leaching out are high with your nitrate because it's a negative. If it was ammonium, it would stick to the soil colloids and diffusions where it diffuses up and slowly goes through it. So it's a better way to get it in to the plant. Oh, sweet. I think I'm just about there. Oh, no, we've got the trichome study. I think I went through all that. I'm not doing deficiencies. Did CO2 research. Yep, trichome study now. Uh, haven't answered any questions. Okay, after this is question time. So get ready. So you can nearly write your questions now. And when I go through this, I'll scroll up to the top and then I'll be going through anything with a question mark next to it will be the thing that I'll be stopping at. How trichomes make terpenes and cannabinoids in supercell pathways. So there's a study done a few months ago in BC where they froze the trichomes in liquid nitrogen to cryofreeze them in a purple push and they seen what was going on. So they wanted to see what sort of acidic cannabinoids and the carbolic acids were getting processed through the different pathways. They found that uh, there was more sesquiterpenes terpenes in the sessiles, and then it started to go into its disc cells and start to expand and get your different monoterpenes happening. And that's its, the growth stages. So you see people, the sessile trichomes have no feet, then pre stalked, and then stalk capitate. But they, yeah, a lot of stuff I used to find in dispensaries used to have this stuff, and it was always clear, not very good, meaning they picked it early. You can get an extra crop that year for doing that. Um, terminal electron microscope, they did all that stuff. What did they find? They found some aldehydes. Yes. Uh, viewing trichomes like never seen before. Let's see what this says. Oh, look. Let's zoom in a bit, huh? Whoa. See all these ruptured trichome heads? That's because they are cryo-freezed and they burst. You, do, you don't want to see that under the microscope because that means your, your oils and all your goodness is gone. 
because that's one spot where it stores in the plant. There's other spots where it stores all its compounds, the dermal tissue, uh, adioblasts, uh, vacuoles. All right. And what's it saying? Oh, it's saying that the pathways are pretty much similar to cells. There's a plasmodesmata, which is the little linkages which goes in between plant cells. And they were seeing, here it is, plasmodesmata. And they're little bridges, it reckons. And it's, yeah, they were saying that they, they send signals and they send chemicals through plasmodesmata that they found in the disc cells. So that's about it. Two scans were done, even though I'm sure I've seen them before, most photos. But anyway, that's it. Very good. Back to it. All right, I can go up and see what's going on. Any questions? I'm sure there'll be a few for these nutrient ones. Uh, I should get on the screen. Hang on. Oh, I'm still sharing. Okay, I'll stop sharing. <laughs> Sorry. I'll add that to the screen and then I'll go back onto this view. And then I'll see it's like a highlight in people's questions. Cheers, Leno. Yep. Cloudscape. Cheers, everyone. Oh my God, I finally catch it one of your streams. Cloudscape. Good on you, Cloudscape. Fair grow. Good on you, Fair Grow. Oh, I can highlight the things. Oh, you've got to do it from streaming. Now. It's not from. Gee, it's difficult, isn't it? All right. I'm back to it. There you go. Fairgro, yep, I see it. Hit like, thanks, Fairgro. Up early clouds, yeah, bears. Um, chronic, nice shirt. Hook, man green, here you go, man green. Uh, yo, Mr. Candica. Whatever that is. Chronic smoker, here you go, mate. Voted today. Oh, voted today. That's the way. Cannabis party. Yes, people vote cannabis in Australia. There is parties around now for that. That's really good. Aussie Gunja Man, who's a gun, mate? There grow white cloudscape. Banana Farmer, Banana Rama. That was a cool band back in the day. Uh, Banana Symbols Baker, good on you. There grow my attention's not good. Okay, does that include lightning? There's a question. Don't know what that's referred to. What well, which we are losing due to incomplete light factors. Does that include? Sorry, I don't know what that means, mate. What if you? What if we reduce CO two emissions? Will plant growth be affected? The plant will. Uh, no, uh, the plant growth will be affected, but it will adjust accordingly. It will put out more stomata. And so it can breathe and respire at a still at the amount that it wants. That was one experiment. That's why I thought it might be good for people to limit CO2 in veg stage so it can power on in bloom stage because you'll increase, if you limit CO2, you'll increase your stomata conductance, the amount of stomata you have per square inch, and then you'll get more assimilation in bloom, but I'm not sure about that. I haven't done a definitive test yet. Small as perhaps terpenes produced based are some perhaps some terpene produced based on top of light source. Um, no, terpenes from they're mainly from stresses. So I suppose a light source, maybe a UV stress, would be correct with that. Yeah, so you could say it. The UV is in the very low below the blue, the 300 nanometers range. So that's a stress because it starts to kill cells and it's not good. A type of light can be replicated. Yeah, UV, mate. Good. Glad I answered that one. Hungry Maggie. Critter. How are you going, Critter? Cloudscape. Oh, yeah, nice one. He reckons it's interesting. Good on you, mate. Blinky. Hello, cannabis fellas and ladies. G'day, Terrence down under. Oh, here's a question. That root level picture was cool. Oh, along with the B. Okay, good on you, Fegro. I thought it nice too. I am banned for seven days from posting videos, lives, contents out of the community. Sorry that I couldn't share your show today. Private. All right. Hear that, everybody? Terrence, he reckons he's banned. That's YouTube for you. That's why I've got to say all these women 
things. I can't swear. I've got to try and do the right thing. I've got to promote legalities. Just for that fact, it's making it difficult. Uh, uh, YouTube don't allow me a community tab to join the club. YouTube don't allow me a community tab. Oh, that may be for your page, is it, mate? Because I've got a community tab. I presume that's he's talking about his one. Tazzy hash noodles, very good. No questions, anybody, huh? Hit like. What EC, here we go. What EC level is too high? I don't feed over 2.2. Oh, well done. 2.2, from memory, is about 1,500 ppm. And let's bring up the sodic chart because there's not many. I think we're nearly at the end. All right, so I can start 40 minutes. I'll bring up a chart on so, uh, salinity levels. And that will tell you about the exactly what your question is because it's about your high is pretty much your 2.2, I think, mate. I think you're pretty much onto it. Plant science, uh, fair salinity. It'll be here. It'll be here. You probably want to see all the stuff too. Actually, I'll just share this one. This is a pretty cool one while we're on the monitor. Uh, stream yards present. Share screen. Entire screen, yes. So, soil pollute. So, see the soil. I always break mine up if they're above half an inch in, in diameter. So that's 12 millimetres in diameter all the way across because in the middle, it can be anaerobic, meaning no oxygen, meaning all those spores that are in there will sprout and germinate in there are the bad ones, the umycetes, the waters, water, um, water moulds. They are the things that are going to give us problems. So, yeah, I just thought I'd bring that up. I'm looking for the sadicity chart and it's pretty close to me somewhere. So I thought I'd share that one because it's... Not sedicity, salinity. I get those two mixed up. This is what your, your question was, mate. So what level do you feed to have? So they reckon they class this medium is 0.75, which is only 480 ppm. Well, that's right. This is, I'm, I could make up, I should make up a cannabis one. When you have problems, it's about above 3,000, I reckon. So above, what's that? 4 EC, you've got big problems. But if you're staying about 2.2 or about under 2,000 ppm, so what's that, maybe 3? Three? 3 EC or under 2,000 ppm, you're pretty right. You find that um, your cultivar should be fine under those conditions and you shouldn't be putting it under much stress. But all saying that, each, each plant, each difference, each cultivar, each genotype, they're all different to each other. So you could have ones that's saline tolerant that you can grow it in massive amounts, and it's a, class as a halophyte because it's it's can produce it, it's fine in those types of salt conditions. But um, so it all depends. But that's a general thing to go off. So if you're about your two thousand, uh, you know you you're doing well, mate. Two thousand ppm, but you don't want that all the time. Anyway, I'm not going to. Hope that's answered your question. There. Cloudscape, 2.2 EC said he does just underneath it. Very good, mate. Here we go, Baker. You run cocoa clouds. Oh, do you test your runoff? Uh, oh, here we go. He answered the question for me. Depends on the strain or phenotype. Yes. Well, remember your phenotype is equal to the genotype plus the environment equals your phenotype. So it's the stresses, the abiotic and biotic stresses that that genotype's put under gives you your phenotype. But yeah, thanks for answering the question for me, mate. <laughs> so what does that mean? Oh, damn. I don't know what you're referring to. Sorry. Monty, g'day, I'm late. No, you're not late, mate. You just got up. It's all right. You didn't have a late for you. <laughs> DW, forget my asked. Oh, you can ask Cloudscape. Do you have a favorite terpene smell that you have 
grown? That Huda asks me, I think. That's an interesting question. Okay. Uh, well, what's my favourite terpene or smell? What really do I get some excited? I like this fruit tingles. Well, it makes my mouth salivate, and it's the first uh, cultivar I've ever had that my mouth salivated. So it tastes just like those Australian fruit tingles lollies, particularly the pink version. It's, I think it's a spitting image, so I don't smell it anymore. So that was pretty cool. Uh, what else do I like? I've got this other one called uh, Tetra, and it's a very unique. It's very hydrocarbony. It's even a sweet rubber, if that's possible. But um, that's unique as well. That was uh, Lavender Bomb Cross, Lavender Bomb Trip, that was a triploid. It was a tetraploid outcome. But yeah, that was some polyploid stuff. But that might have been produced because um, tetraploids have characteristics where they produce 30% more sesquitween terpenes. So it could have been to do with that as well because of its chromosome count in it, that it was possibly high. But th thanks for the question, mate. What's your favourite one, Hooter, or anybody else? Have you got any? I don't, I'm not too fussed on this dog shit strain, to be honest with you. I've heard a few people talk about that. That doesn't take tickle my fancy. I'm a fruity person and lollies, I suppose. I like that. Just nice fruits. Uh, actually, banana. That was a, that comes to mind. That was amazing. It smelled. I had a banana. Uh, God's white banana kush, and that smelled like you had some bananas that were just ripe perfect right put them in a bowl mush them up like you're going to give them to a baby and that smell it and that's what the buds smell like that was very nice as well um good question huda never had that one mate cheers moment meds yeah terence got a channel strike no good mate this it's no good at all for mushy tan oh i don't want to talk about that <laughs> he's explaining it there under the microscope that's really strange hey gmf holy mackerel look at that my only question is to you oh i hope you're doing well good i hope and congratulations on on having a cannabis yeah about time we've got a cannabis party in australia thank you it is very good i'm getting there mate it's, yeah do the show try and help everybody out it's the main thing Blinky, never mind, he says, Terence, yes, never mind, T, you'll be right, yes, channel strike means, yeah, I've, they've warned me too for stuff that I've put up to, mate, that's why I've got to be real diligent in what I say and what I do, etc, it's very hard, here we go, just wondering your thoughts on BI plus headed trichomes have seen been seeing bi trip plus headed in literature they look crested bi plus um i don't know what that means maybe multi-glandular head is that when there's more than one head on the top that's what i think that's referring to i'm not sure mate that's what well, it's if that's the case there's different trichome formations it goes through different pathways to form those cells uh, what do I have on that? I've got the different pathways to form them, but not those multi-pathways that you're talking about. Because uh, jasmonic acid is a very good one to initiate the trichome production, and it initiates the jazz gene and and the my five. Actually, do you want me to show you that? There's not many questions left. All right, Aussie, I'll I'll pick up for the. I'll look in my little notes, and I'll see the trichome pathway for you so what's that in plant science genetics and i should have hopefully no it's not that one all right give me a little bit i'm trying to find the pathway breeding micro assisted back crossing let's see if it's under this section uh no it's not that one either Chromosome mutations, pollination, triploids. No, it's not that either. It should be under. Oh, it's probably not under breeding. It's under secondary metabolites. Ah, 
there we go okay all right I nearly got it it's a little bit better at least I'm in the right section now here it is all right this is one way of the formations I'm gonna go up and share first present share screen using jasmonic acid you initiate you put a methyl jasmonic acid and then it'll operate the jazz gene which is your cold genes your j1 gel1 which will therefore turn on your my my five my 75 gl3 which will give you your initiation and then it'll depend if you've in defense to what pathway that initiated at the start if it's going to go into defense terps or if it's going to go into other terps which you might want to attract them or trying to um, repel it or try and tell other plants allelopathy what's going on so there could be different pathways it's going to did you know another cool thing the flg22 gene is a gene that the plant picks up from the flagella that comes out of the back of bacteria so if it's got a little mo mobile flag thing in little stick thing that flicks around that makes it move around it'll um pick it up from the flg22 gene anyway i hope that that's part of the question it doesn't really help much for what you did ask sorry Aussie Gunja man you might have clarified below yeah Tazzy buffering poor Tazzy yes mate you'll get there soon yes thank you says Cloudscape oh here we go I ain't talking strain or whatever just want to know if I can take it a bit more yeah test your cultivar out for that you might have one that's um a halophyte you might have this new variety that can take um, twice that mate you don't know so that's where you'll be able to do the test you'll be able to see if it's going to struggle it'll start and twist and the leaves will tell you it won't look happy it won't be praying anymore it'll be struggling it'll, um, and then you'll know then and then you'll see after it you'll give it a flush of the substrate you'll measure your runoff and you'll see it'll dramatically drop down to the level that you want then the plant will be happy again so you'll um can tell if your genotype is suited for that Cloudscape, Mysterial, Cassius Clay, there you go. How early can you start fertilizing? Will, will you damage the plant if it's too young? Yes, it's great. That so relates to this question. Yep, the salinity level, is it still up here? It is here, Brad. All right, I'll share. Good question there. Cassius Clay, wow. Uh, no, it's not that one. Sorry about that. It is this one. So with your your clones, you, the answer is yes. You can start whenever there's roots. They're looking for nutrients to absorb. And if they can't absorb them, they're not going to be able to do their development pathways that are going to give them what they want. So it's as soon as you see roots, they want nutrients. But if it's too high, that's when you're going to burn them. And you sort of see lip, leaf tip burn and that's the, the first sort of thing and then after that you'll see them just start and reject everything so your little young ones you don't want to give anything more than 400 ppm that's a good level to go off and then after they get a little bit bigger you can go up to push them see what your cultivars can handle i've yeah I don't know what else to say to that. 400 is a good level to start with, and you shouldn't really go wrong. And that's a blend. That's not talking about 400 of just nitrogen either. That's your substrates. If you do have to do that, if you're not going organics, tr um, try and keep it low. And if you are going organics, and try and put these in your like your your neem and your other nitrogen to get your organic blends up in your liquid feeds, you'll want to dilute it to get it below maybe I don't know six seven hundred dilute it test your cultivar out again make sure it doesn't reject it so if anything just start low because your plant needs such a little requirements remember that chart before uh no i want the percents this one remember it says how little so you look down here so most of it 95 percent comes from the air then how 1.5 percent is nitrogen one percent is potassium half a percent is calcium so there's most of the plant when it's starting it has these in its condolina leaves it'll have all of these nutrients there for it to go for the first probably two or three nodes up 
So um, you really can go on the lower side, if anything. Then you'll start to see yellowing. If your condolina leaves is a bit yellow, you might know, all right, well, nitrogen might be, it's sucking nitrogen hard. So you might be able to dose a bit more of nitrogen. I hope that helps, mate. Good question, Cassius Clay. What's, here we go. What strain you token on at the moment? Uh, I'm just not, I'm just talking to you guys, to be honest. I'm not smoking. I, I could focus to this fair grass pretty, I find it hard. <laughs> Otherwise, I get flustered. Monty, uh, yeah. Uh, Tazzy, yeah. They reckon it, it tastes like it. That's strange. Dead set. And I thought, I don't want any interest in that. I don't want to cross that. Yuck, fancy bringing out the best in your in your dog shit strain. Oof. Your dogs would be sniffing out the windows. I like bees sniffing at my windows. Lemon sip. Kush once. Oh, yeah. Blinky. I'm chuffing on. So I'm not too bad. Hydro. My, oh, that's the way. CBD flower. Very good, mate. Good health. Yes. Oh, that's very good. Yes. Cinderella 99 is a good medicinal strain. Well done, mate. Wow. And a turret profile with strawberries ice cream. That's showing off, I reckon. Wow. That's very good work. Jeez. Pink has a smell that I've never had before. Wicked. Terpenes are everything. The nose knows. If you're, there was a test done, remember a few shows back that the terpene, if that agrees with your nose, there's a high chance it'll agree with your body. But that's the terpene profile, not the sativa indica profile, which messes still with me being caffeine sensitive. What do you all think about fruit peels and egg shells chopped up finely for newts? I have spread it. Well, it's got to be broken down by microbes first. So if you're spreading that out, that's you're making a compost and you're going to attract all these saprophytes which you're going to try and decompose at first so to grow in compost is good but you're going to get a lot of probably bugs and stuff that you don't want it might improve your soil respiration so your co2 level will go up which is really good but um in general you want to break it down first in a compost heap and then add that broken down stuff into your plants and feed it that that's a way i would suggest to do it it's a lot safer because you don't know what has been put inside of your bananas and rock melons and things when they've been grown. They bioaccumulate stuff and it could be bad and toxic and harmful for your plants. They could use pesticides and whatnot. So you want to break it down first through worms and through compost and other bugs that are going to accumulate in their bodies and mineralize it, and uh, sorry, immobilize it in their bodies. And then it'll be safer for your plants. That's what I'd suggest to do. It's all about, I like doing the safe way, but excellent question, Fair Grow. Oh, look, voting Cannabis Party Australia. Good on your Blinky. You're helping us all out, my friend. It's It'll be soon. It'll be soon. Another question. When it comes to epigenetics, is there, an, is there a way to actually turn off terpenes and cannabinoid genes? Is there studies on this? Uh, well, yeah, through epigenetics. You can do it through by having no abiotic or biotic stresses. So letting the plant express itself naturally. You're not going to induce any obs obscure pathways. That's one way. And another way is through, it's called the genet, um, genetic, mosaic, genetic mosaicism hypothesis. And that's where they did a, a cannabis test on mother plants where to see how a genetic, epigenetics impacts your cloning of your mother plants to produce further offspring down the track to keep your genetics intact and that was just a test to show whereabouts to take a clone from on the plant to reduce epigenetics because as you said pooter it's a major factor in plants every everything does it that's how we form that's how biology works it has to improve itself so if it sees little ways where it can it'll improve those cells and kill off the bad cells. That's why only the strong get stronger. Bloody good question, mate. Uh, genetics is in two weeks' time. I'm doing a, a show on genetics. I'm saving all the slides that I've found for for that. What does he do? He puts it in the ground before a plant. See, so by doing that, it's somewhat composting it, and it's getting it to broke down first. I put 
fair grow. I put it says he puts the eggshells fine. Well, fit. Do you want to yeah breaking down eggshells will take ages to break down. It takes months. You'll see them sitting in your compost heap large for a long time. So there's no real purpose in plants. Yeah, eggshells. They can be like a biochar or a little accumulation for um, things that are calcium dependent that they want to sit in there. They might make their little homes, little microbes. Remember microbes, the size of their lifespan is a dot on a pencil with a bit of paper. So you put a dot on the paper, that's its life, its, its size that it can move around in. So it might make a little home in there, eggshells. There's three different types of trikes. Three different types of trikes, at least from what I've learned. Trichomes. Okay. That's the way Monty. I want to bury a fish, a fish head under one of my specials in, for a friend in Oregon. Yeah, Blinky, that works well. Um, a friend in BC used to get all the salmon carcasses and put them on his property, and then he'd put bark chips and stuff, and then soil in that, and then blend it, and then blend it over 12 months, keep turning it with the tractor, and I used to love it because all the bears used to come, the black bears, I used to play with them heaps. But um, it was fantastic. It broke down to be brilliant because fish hydrozate is a really good amendment and addition to your, your plants. Nice one, Blinky, helping out other people too. Props to you. Uh, here we go. Oh, okay. That's another show. question for me. I'm starting to smoke for that of the day. I can smoke some Bruce Banner and Girl Scout cookies. Good work. Medicinal cannabis works. Does anyone know if garden beds make a made of hempcrete would be any good? Maybe better than breathability? Correct. I think so too. Yes. And they would retain all your microbes. They'd be like a little house for them. So I think that's it's very good. Hempcrete is the future, mate. But you know Australian bloody law? I tried to get a license for hemp to do industrial hemp, all sorts of paperwork, all sorts of problems, everything. Yeah, yeah. I'm better off going overseas and then making it over there and then importing the hempcrete stuff here. There's a big place over in the Ukraine that does it that you can get some really, really cool hempcrete products. Just excellent. It's it's the future. And did you know too, it's fire resistant. You can put a gas bottle torch up to hempcrete and it won't catch fire ever. So. People making concrete buildings, we can use hempcrete and it's fire resistant for Australia. How practical is that? No, no, no. You gotta get you gotta be a multi-million dollar company, you've got to pay all these people for blooming paperwork. That's what the government says, because I tried to do it. Great question, Huda. Yes, mate, I agree. It sounds good. Had a cup up. There you go, fair grow. Aussie grows blinky. Can someone refer me to the strongest CBD plant in Australia? Uh, well, CBD is legal, I suppose. Well, uh, um, I know of a hemp cultivar called OG Dream, which is amazing. <laughs> and um, it smells like orange sherbet. It's fantastic. It tests 20% CBD, 0.1% THC, and it's of an indica lena. That agrees well with my body. I smoke that hemp flour and have bread with that hemp flour. Uh, that's all I can, I don't know, mate. Yummy. Yes. Cindy 99 is really, really good for medicinal. The name M knows. He's got that. Yeah. I've got that one. Links CBD only or THC and CBD, Monty says. Um, 1024. All right, going there. Oh, Jesus, a fair bit to go through. I'm just looking at Cloudscape. Cloudscape says, Man, I know this girl running around with Durban poison. Oh, yep, she's making a cut. To, yep, 2EC. Yeah, they're different people, a different. Um, Salinity levels can handle different cultivars and genotypes. Hey, Goliath Grow, how you going? It's the way. Hide. Must love her. Bert. Cheers, AA. I bought this strain. Oh, yep. Um, sorry, Matt. Aussie CC. Oh, 
I don't know what that was referring to. Aussie Gunja Man, sorry, mate. You have to ask that question again. I'm trying to go down and answer questions and there's still, you can see where I'm up to for what questions I'm there and there's still a fair bit to go down on the list. I can see that. Best strain I've had. Oh, here we go. I'll read this one. This is from Cloudscape Mystico. Best strain I've had a cat's piss before tested. Awesome. Just skunk like cat's piss. If you've had a Oz or a Rowan, he likes his cat piss. There you go. See? So different things agree to different genetic makeups. That might be crap to me. It might be brilliant to him. He's going, yeah, give me my cat's piss, skunk. <laughs> Good on you, Cloudscape and Stiko. Here's someone praying. Blinky prayers for you from Monty. Uh, awesome. Thank you. Yep, CBD is legal in Australia. You can get it across the counter as far as I know, but the problem is the pharmacists, they don't stock it because they can't get it because it's not available because no one, the laws in Australia make it too hard to grow. But I'm under the understanding that anybody can have a plant legally in their backyard, but you'll probably just get some hassles from the cops and they'll probably nearly take it because they won't think it's a T of L. They'll think you're growing cannabis because it looks exactly the same. And to the dumb or to the uneducated police, they definitely won't have any idea. And because they get so many... People tell them the opposite. They won't know. Oh, good. Much love. It must have helped. Good on you. Blinky. Seth says, yes, folk, legalize one Victoria. They have it in the party. Please, everybody, if you can do that, really, really helps everyone. Better health. Everyone can grow it soon. It's just not this money manipulated monopoly with money. Let's go. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. See, he's pushed some pretty hard with the EC. I've, my friend used to also feed at uh, feed at 2EC and accumulate, have no runoff. So his substrate with his runoff would have been probably four. That was his cultivars. And I've pushed into the three ECs, like 2,500 ppm. No worries, runoff. I would be scared if, he, if the runoff was over 3,000. So, yes, good on you, Aussie Gunja Man. You can push hard with your cultivars. And if not, you can manipulate, you can make them change because epigenetics, so you can change them each cycle, slowly make them adjust. Hi. How do you go, Seth? Jeff, I wish I had the dog shit strain growing. Uh, that's funny, Jeff. Hell yeah. See? Vote Cannabis Victoria when the hubby puts me... Oh, I thought someone was in a wheelchair. But it's still going to help everybody's health. Um, that's to someone else. Oh, here you go. Something about compost. You can make avocado cantaloupe worm home with shells in the environment. But as Ozzy said, it's better than compost. Oh, yeah. See, he's, he's speaking from experience. That's good. Good on you, Huda. Hopefully it's not Dan. Yeah. Anyway, it's politics stuff. We're just going to vote for positives and get it across so we all can be happy. Pollinating. Seth. Mad Organic Cannabis. Hey, how you going, mate? Good evening. You are having a resonating harmonic day. Hey, I'm now, mate. Mad Organic Scientist in the house. Who couldn't be? Does not mean... Cheers. There you go. I had someone went 3.2 EC, but that's not pr that's pretty rare. So yeah, banana farmer. So that's different cultivars out there for different things. Helophytes, you can nearly call that. Uh, that's the thing. Oh, it's more about yep. To vote legalize in Australia. 3.2. Yeah, that is intense banana. Yeah, I wouldn't um recommend that, but. Hey, if it takes it, it's going to take it. And you might have, if there's no stresses around it, and if you've got your cultivar ready for it, and you can increase the CO2 and get the photosynthesis action happening and get the humidity lower so it's transferring its nutrient cycling through the plant faster and out through the stoma when it's respiring, you might be able to do that. That's the perfect way. And it's really hard, hard, hard to get to that. And I've only ever had, I think, two perfect runs ever in my life. Where I could have pushed the limits. Hempcrete. Yep. There you go. It works. 
good suggestion, mate. I love the hempcrete too. I would love to have got into my hemp stuff. I've got a file on hemp. It's got so much benefits. It's not funny. The reason why it was told a bunch. Actually, here I'll put. This is getting out of hand. I'll put a. I'm going to finish soon. There's not many questions coming up. I'll just invite just to be polite. Remember, if anybody wants to come up, it's a it's a uh, it's a family stream. You can call it. No swearing, no off things, no smoking. Good way to treat it, actually. It's a good way to treat it. I'm thinking, mad scientist says, if every living organism is manipulated by frequency, it can be it can be helpful, but I'm kind of wondering, will the wrong frequency kill or make your plant sick? Yeah, frequencies with UV in it, UVC, around 350 or wherever it is, that will kill cells. So unless your cultivar is up to it, you're, um, it's going to heavily put it under a lot of stress with that frequency. Same with bugs. That's what kills you. You put a UVC lamp over uh, areas and it sterilizes benches. That's where you use them in your laminated flow hoods. When you're doing tissue culture and stuff, you always have a UVC lamp in there. Uh, it just really helps. It also kills um, UVC is the frequency and it also kills smells. So it's very, very potent. It's cool as put one get a five watt one put it in your intake and outtake fans instead of co2 filter interesting results great question mad organic scientist here we go we've got someone in here sunshine's popped in i've got to go through some very sunshine so please just bear with me a minute mate but is there yep cassius clay here we go as a question that's <coughs> Exactly what I do with hemp. So better off going overseas, being legit, and then importing it. Yeah, see, it's we're working with the Australian law, and the Australian law gore is shit at the moment. So we've unfortunately got to take our money elsewhere and import the stuff back into Australia when we could do it here. And we're trying to reduce with this government at the moment. They're trying to try and reduce carbon, and it's a perfect. You know, it goes hand in hand. But anyway, you can only do so much. Good on you, Cassie's clay. I love the smell of rotten. Really? <laughs> okay, there you go. See, see how every genetic makeup's different. People? We're all different. Yep. <laughs> Welcome, sunshine. I've grown. See, he, this is my, he's grown cat piss, and it so stinks wicked. See, mm. it's it's amazing. <laughs> Oh, here we go. It says you're on, and I'll read it. Might be funny. Wicked. When it was in full flower, mine in a cross between mango, which was this rotting fruit smell, with urine behind it. Isn't that Beautiful. funny? Oh, yeah. Those intrusive smells are quite uh, stimulating. Yes. So, is it legal <laughs> to grow CBD in Australia? Well, as far as I know, CBD is it's anything below point. Actually, I think it's 1% now in Australia. It used to be 0.3% is legal. You have to check with your local laws, but as far as I'm aware, I think that's true. Don't I'm not in the law, but I think that's right, mate. So, yeah, JT. Go hard, buddy. And soon it'll be legal anyway. Oh, here we go. Got another person here. Hook. I'll get to you soon, Hook. How are you going, mate? Really, actually, at the end. So, oh. welcome, Sunshine and Hook. He's Sunshine first. How are you going, mate? Uh next question all right g'day hook how are you g'day cc uh g'day sunshine and g'day, g'day everybody in chat how you doing another good show aussie cc very informative uh just jumping Thanks. up to say i appreciate that it's uh, uh much yeah. needed in the community and uh very thankful sure. make sure no guys worries. you hit the thumbs up because uh it's very hard to grow these types of channels um and basically the way we grow is uh, helping each other you know, grow together, roll together, share the stream or show some love uh, by uh, smashing the thumbs up. Appreciate Send your work, money. Ozzy. Good stuff. No worries. Thanks, mate, for the support. No worries. Hey, uh, g'day, Ozzy Autos. And look, at this is a bit of bad luck for him. Oh. Holy mackerel, he's been smashing too hard the bongs and he broke his arm. Mate, maybe go the vaporizer. It's a more medicinal route and you'll save your arm. <laughs> bit of a funny thing. Oh, yeah. all right. I think anything else down? Oh, here we go. Hey, Monty, just looking down for any questions. 
Wombat Organics, g'day Wombat, how you going? On YouTube five years ago, oh yes, about music. Yeah, I had a big break. Uh, CBD, is, oh yeah, Fair Grow might know something. To grow CBD, I think you've got to get a license. And that's for a commercial license. If you want to sell it, but for personal consumption, I don't think you need anything. If you want to try and any type of selling, you're not allowed to do anything with cannabis unless you need any license. Of. But um, possibly for your own, like ACT is legal to have two plants per person to a max of four per household. And so you can do whatever you want. But CBD, I thought, was the same Australia-wide under the 0.1, uh, sorry, the 1%. But definitely check. Don't hold me against that one. Things change so often. Hey, fellow vapors. Vaping's the health way. Yes. Good stuff. This has been going for ages. One and a quarter well, hours. Well, I would <coughs> argue that, that eating was even safer than oh, vaping. Another person. Eating's an, eating. Well, eating is better on the lungs. But no, lads. Because we're not meant to. I just... Um, yeah, there. Yeah, it's it is safer because we're not meant to eat it but through our lungs. It's gonna. But again, if depends what you're putting into it. If you've got all your medicinal cannabis going through your lungs, it might be safer than your definitely your street weed growing stuff through your lungs. Definitely, because it's it's gonna you're gonna break down. You're gonna get all that toxic tar in, built into your lungs, mm -hmm. and if you can't get rid of it, I hope that helped to your question, mate. Hey, PTP. This is a good show today, PTP. It was worthwhile looking back. It was all about nutrients and plants, and I pretty did a good summary of what you need, what the plant requires, and how it gets into the plant. And, yeah, it was. I think it was a pretty good show in general. It was probably one of the better ones that I've done, not to quite, but one of the more informative ones that's going to help people. Anyways, no, uh, no. CC, have a great day, mate. Good show. Indeed it was. So uh, I'll see you when I'm looking at you. I'll be live a little bit later. Probably I'll see you for yours in, in 10 minutes. Yeah, Maybe an hour, hour or so, I'll be live. And um, oh. I'll, I'll be doing not not uh, vegetation. We'll be talking about vegetation and re today. But I just wanted okay. to swing through and say uh, it was good to listen because I listened. It was very podcasty. This was very good listen uh, oh, Thank you today. I was out in the yard listening to this in, either on my phone or um, the computer, mm. and it was really good. Maybe even uh, download it and make uh, put it into like a, a podcast sort of a listening thing, yeah. CC, because it's really good. It's a really been a really good day listening to you. Take care, everyone. I'll Thanks. see you when I'm looking at you. Bong on. Jeez, Roll one. Bad. Roll together. Hi, yeah. Zaya. Yeah, I cleaned my house while listening to this, so it was good. But I didn't retain anything because I'm on four hours sleep. That's my issue. That's no good, mate. In Lucky one in your out the other. Unfortunately. Lucky you can, um, can rewatch it. Yeah, exactly. I'll watch the I'm interested in the cat eye and exchange stuff. Get my head around that at some point. Yeah. 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 It's it's pretty yeah, it's good to get your head around because understanding those basic processes allows yeah. you to manipulate the plant to your benefit. Yeah, it's it, they're all so important when you get down to it. Like there's one aspect where it's like, oh, just put it in a plant, uh, put it in a pot, let it grow, or whatever. Get some bunning soil, but um, you know, there's there's just so much more to it. It's just so such a massive, um, fuck, just endless. It really is um, the amount of knowledge you can, you know, the rabbit hole goes deep. Yep. And did you have any questions, Aya? On the nutrients and cannabis or anything like that, mate? Nah, not really, bro. I just wanted to jump up and say hello. Oh, good on you. No probs. All right, well, next week I'm, I'll am i give you a bit of a sneak peek on what I'm going to be discussing. Uh, when I bring it up, live, there it is. Next week. Oh, it's a health one. It's anti anti cancer cannabinoid genes. It's Kenna Health, the endocannabinoid system, and phyto research. So the different phytos is the, like, oh, here, I'll give you a bit of a sneak peek. You've got, uh, here, I've just got to present and show the screen because it's pretty interesting, the, the phytos, the way that you can get down. Oh, there's too many things shared now. There it is. 
your phyto extraction, the phyto stabilization, phyto transformation, rhizo degradation, which is done through the, the roots, and then phyto volatilization, leaching out, and then filtration through the roots. So there's a few different ways the plants and there's remediation. I suppose this is all remediation, but that's um yeah, I'll be going into a bit more detail on that next week. Very good. Oh, it's only sunshine's already left. Oh, all right. Do you have oh, any I've um? How does? Um, oh, here we go. I'll just answer this one question. White ashes is coming in with a late question. Do you, how does smoke affect leaves? How does smoke affect leaves? Um, well, the air would be, you want the air to be made up of the 20.9% um, oxygen and the 0.3% CO2. So if you put air into the leaves, it's going to be reducing that amount. So it's not going to be beneficial. So I wouldn't suggest it, but it's, yeah, that's just how the plant works. It's like you putting into your body. It's not really made for it. And it's, you're not going to, you don't want to give it a buzz unless you want to really be best friends with it. And maybe, you know, but <laughs> I wouldn't suggest it. That's what would I think would happen, mate. Good question though, white ashes. Because yeah, a lot of people do smoke, especially the if you blow out your cigarette smoke with all your bitumen and all your heavy carcinogens in it, cannabis is bioaccumulator, mate. So it's just going to accumulate them. It'll suck it in and it can't, it's got no option. It takes it into its cells and it has to put it somewhere. So it stores it in its vacuoles and it, it tries to get rid of it. So it'll turn it into, like through the phytovoltization, it'll try and transform it. So anything you give to the plant, be really careful, like your human body, anything you give to it, it's there's a chance it has adverse effects. That's a good question, though. Good on your white ashes. Keep up the good work, mate. 420 bin. Hey! Hope you're staying warm. Yeah, look at him. Hope you're staying warm because he's in the freezing Arctic. <laughs> yeah, it's some bloody sweating here, mate. <laughs> he's going, oh, shut up. Yeah, well, I wish it was snow outside, to be honest. I really like the snow. Yep. White ash is just blowing bong smoke. All right. Aussie CO2 injection for bongs. Uh, that's pretty funny. Very good. Thanks, everybody. Is there any final words you want to say, Sunshine? No, nah, not at this point. Do you want to say anything, mate? Uh, good stream, bro. Awesome. No worries. Well, thank you, CC. I'd like to thank everybody. Cheers, bro. Well, then I'll mute there on my... One bit. <laughs> Isn't it good to blow smoke on your plants, though? Doesn't that give them a little boost of something? Who doesn't fucking... It'd probably turn it into food somehow, if it does. I would imagine, I would imagine a lot of people would do that. <coughs> oh, we lost it. Aussie. Yeah, it probably would turn it in years it's somehow, but turn my smoke would obviously wouldn't be good. <coughs> it's funny, it's a, it's a weed show and you've got the two people who aren't smoking weed currently on it. <laughs> the only two in the fucking community. Actually, I had, I had a. Well, how long you been off for, bro? I did two weeks and then had a couple of days like flat out, and then went off again, and then I had a vape at three thirty a.m. last night because I just couldn't fucking sleep. I had a lot of shit going on. Yeah, I've been. Yeah, how are you? Four weeks now, a bit over four weeks. Five weeks, probably. How you Not feeling? sure now. Yeah, I feel good, bro. Uh, yeah, it's good. Sides isn't all it? the tobacco like, I'm smoking. Get but... past that first week. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's a bit rough, especially if you uh, messing around with like oils and stuff like that. The 
tolerance is so fucking high. It's better to actually wean off any extractions or whatever and then just vape or just do joints or something and then go from there. I don't, I don't reckon it's a good idea to go cold turkey from like high tolerance to nothing, but that's just my opinion. Yeah, well, I was having smoking buds off bars, but yeah, I just quit overnight pretty much, went straight off at cold turkey. <coughs> yeah, well, I'm going to get fucked up later today, so looking forward to that. <laughs> Stuck, bro. Yeah. yeah, I've still got buds in that there. It's tempting, but nah, I don't know. Enjoying it. Don't want to throw it away. Yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. It's, it's, no it's not going anywhere. You're not going anywhere. Yeah, exactly. Enjoy it. Come a bit of a phobia at the moment. I like it's commented in the comments now. Thanks, it's appreciation. Hello. Oh, oh good day. Oh, there is. Oh, I was just writing. Everyone's singing. Oh, the internet's down. <laughs> oh, we were just oh, going to keep God. the show going. Oh, okay. Jeez, uh, I'm glad I blooming come back in because you just want to sit here all day and think anything could have been yeah, happening. Yeah, in the way. Yeah. Doing this, showing this, all right. That's I have lucky it was right at the end. So I was thinking we must have thought the end of it. Yeah, my limited internet. I I usually go on my phone to try and get a better internet connection too, and it's just dropped everything out. So good on you. Thanks, use to use pair for holding it. And um, PTP said we'll stay till the stream ends. And I'm thinking, what is still going? How do you know that? And I thought, oh shit, I better investigate this. <laughs> good on you, PTP. Thanks, everybody, again. Good on you, Zaya and Sunshine. Thanks for See in half an hour at Hooks. Yeah, I'll be over there for see what's going on there. And then um, I'll see you later for the weed nerds. Have fun. Thanks. Happy growing, happy breeding, and good health to you all. I'm signing off. Catches.